Welcome back to another episode of The Exponential Files. Uh, your hosts today are uh, Jim Lowenstern and myself, Larry Lawfer. Each week, we bring you a special EXP uh, luxury agent or someone who's doing an incredible job. And today we have another wonderful guest, Elena Corbett from uh, the Atlanta area of Georgia. Welcome to the show, Elena. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to have you here. And like we talk on this show all the time, every agent comes from a different background. So your background, you're originally Russian. You studied computer science and, and business management. Uh, you were a um, uh, loan officer. Were you a loan officer? For a you while, yes. For a while. Uh, you've had a number of business type jobs, which I'm sure has helped you become a really great agent. Talk a little bit about why you're at EXP and how you found EXP and what it means to you. Well, uh, being a, a recovering software developer, um, I actually really like our digital everything format. Um, I also know that EXP was founded by uh, previously Keller Williams agents, and that's where I started my career. And that's where I came from. Um, it just felt like a perfect next step. Exactly. And I noticed that you're only on EXP a pregnant period of time, nine months. Uh, have, has it given any birth to anything? Oh, yeah. Quite a few transactions, actually. <laughs> And a couple of brand new agents that um, I brought in and um, I'm mentoring. So, yeah. That is the Elena Corbett. Uh, go ahead, Jim. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about the mentoring program. I actually had a broker reach out to me. I mean, I probably speak to somewhere between 40 and 100 agents worldwide every week. Um and this name popped up. I go, hmm. Let me let me go through all my lists. I, I couldn't find I couldn't find them anywhere. All I had to really do was look in my MLS, and there she is, but not on my MLS roster, not on my team. And uh, I I called her and I said, uh, uh, How do we know each other? Because she wanted me to be her mentor. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, I I think she said something like, uh, I'm not required to have a mentor, uh, but I, I think it's a good idea. So I had to break it down. On my team as a certified mentor, I kind of waived that because I mentor everyone. And um, so talk a little bit about the mentoring program, uh, the value to you as an EXP agent mentoring somebody else. I mean, do they become like an unpaid assistant? Well, an assistant that pays you? Um, no. Talk about it, please. No. Uh, the mentorship, the way I see it, is all about helping that particular agent enter the business and grow it very fast. And so the way that I do my calls with the agents that I mentor is a little bit different. Um, I actually teach them uh, very precise, valuable, quick set of skills that helps them launch. And uh, it's it, it takes a little different approach, I think, uh, but the way I like to do it is first they shadow me and then I shadow them. And I will actually help them make appointments and I will go on those appointments with them to help them see how to close. Um, we, you know, I've done listing presentations for my mentees in the past and I mentored agents at Keller Williams too, except uh, it wasn't a paid mentorship. And here with EXP, uh, I have the opportunity also to earn some money doing that. And to me, it's a win-win uh, because not only I'm helping the new agent launch, but it also rewards me financially. So uh, I, I think it's a great program. Um, I'm very happy to offer my help to any agents in the area. Um, as long as it's geographically feasible, because I do want to be present at their appointments and, you know, make them really make a, a sale. No, you, you explained it perfectly. I'm going to suggest that she, don't, she doesn't use me. The money sounded good. 
uh, the time element involved. Um, I'll I'll talk to people all day long, but to be running around when I'm already running in four different directions, that probably wouldn't be fair to them. It's but, a it's uh, a big commitment. It it's sounds like commitment. it. However, if you do it right, you only have to do it a couple of times. So, you know, our mentees have to complete three sales to exit the program. Right. And, you know, if I do my job properly, mm -hmm. I only need to go with them for two, three appointments. Okay. So these appointments, are you talking about meeting buyers, meeting mm -hmm. sellers? Meeting a buyer, meeting a couple of sellers. And I also bring them in on my open houses where I teach them how to do the open house. Sure. That's exactly, by the way, uh, three uh, uh, deals, not rentals. It's the same way Keller works as yeah, well. Not rentals, not rentals. It's, it's a okay, deal. so how do you help them get listings? Well, what do you, what do you say to them? What are the, what are the steps? Uh, well, it depends. If they come with a really good network of people, uh, the first thing we do is uh, reach out to uh, their sphere. Um, and I have a set of emails that I had composed and perfected through the years uh, that are geared towards being a brand new agent. So we uh, send out those emails. Uh, we help them uh, enter all of their sphere into KV Core. Um, start a campaign, just do different things. And I also talk to my mentees about networking and other things that uh, they need to do uh, because not everybody is comfortable enough with cold calling right off the bat. It, it's just, you know, like people don't come with those skills usually. So when you say cold calling, are you you speaking like Red X or Vulcan mm -hmm. 7? Yeah. Yeah, like calling expires and fizzbos. Uh, we, we will get to that later. Um, but, you know, in the beginning, it's very intimidating. And if you start with that, it can scare somebody off. Really? Okay. Yeah. What about door knocking? Oh, we, we do door knocking around the, li uh, the listings all the time. Mm -hmm. the, circle, right. the circle work, you know, yep. 200 houses around yep. where your house is. Yeah, we do or knock. Um, it's it's a great exercise. Uh, do not recommend it on a hundred degree and a hundred percent humidity Georgia summer day. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did that in Florida. I I, I got my license. <clears throat> um, well, the last millennium actually, uh, <laughs> and um, started uh, with uh, a suit and. Um, trousers and uh, yeah and literally a suit and uh, I think it was actually a corduroy suit and it was probably June or July and oh. I thought uh, door knocking on uh, Hypoluxo Island in Palm Beach was a good idea first of all no one was home no one's in Florida in a neighborhood like that in the summer anyway so there I am door knocking and that lasted about 20 minutes before I realized, no, we've got to try something else. Well, you're lucky you didn't have a heat stroke. <laughs> no, I was <laughs> heading quickly. In the summer? No. Well, the, well the, funny th the funny thing is it got to a point maybe a year or two later, I had a couple of referrals that came down to buy a couple of houses. And so I went from the suit and door knocking to, you know, I was a little more relaxed and it was shorts. Uh, polo shirt and flip flops, mm -hmm. and I sold a couple of houses in Wellington in the middle of the summer in blistering heat. One of the agents who didn't get an offer on her house did uh, reprimand me for my attire. I was like 27, 28. I, I I I took it to heart, but in the back of my mind, I said, "Well, I did sell two houses for them, so." Yeah. On the plus side, I got my first license in Dallas, Fort Worth, and I did. I I I started door knocking, uh, but then I realized that if I 
chose a neighborhood and that's what I did. I chose a really high end neighborhood that I wanted to work in and I started giving market reports. So really nice and all of that. And I would walk the area and people would stop me and talk. Oh, I saw you last week. You're the first agent who's ever stopped by. People are, if, if it's a busy neighborhood, people mm-hmm. and somebody's home, people see you. And and after a while, they get to know you because they've seen your name and they see your market report. Um, they would often say, are, are you a minister? Are you a pastor? I said, no, even worse. I'm a real estate agent. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I was I was told early on in my career, uh, dress for the success that you want. And um uh, but I, I am no longer in Dallas Fort Worth. It does get hot in Massachusetts, but not Dallas or Georgia or Florida weather at all. No, not at all. Yeah. So I'm wondering how it is in uh, in Georgia as far as are people more relaxed with their attire? I mean, Boston mm-hmm. seems to be a pretty relaxed town when yeah. it comes to dress. Yeah. I mean, if you're an attorney, of course, you got to show up you know, dressed with the student tie, but uh, real estate agents, it can go both ways. You know, uh, to be honest with you, one time, uh, <laughs> Larry will probably just be very upset with me for a moment, but uh, I sold the house in my pajamas one time. I was literally home with the flu, sick oh. as I could be, and my client called me, uh, this super hot house just showed up on the market. It was Friday night, about seven o'clock, and that house literally just popped on the market. And he says, I need to see it right now. And it was vacant. And I said, you know, I'm really, really sorry. I am so sick. I'm in my pajamas. I just took a cold medicine. I should not be driving 40 miles to, to see you. And he said, can you please have your husband bring you? I don't care if you are in your pajamas. So there I went. That's a nice and, customer, by the way. That's a great customer. John, I, I had customers and, when and I was mass, sick, and I, another broker. And I sold that house that night. Yeah, that's, that's nice. That, might, that probably made you feel better. When I was uh, really you know sick, what? they made me feel I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I think I got home and passed out right after I wrote that offer, but we got it. So um, things, you know, it really depends on who your audience is. That's what I'm trying to say. And with some people that, you know, that you have a longstanding relationship with, it doesn't matter what you do. They still love you. They still want you. They, you know, you're still hanging the stars and changing their lives. I had a client I've done five deals with. I've now done seven deals with him, but it, this was at the end of the, f- the fifth deal. And I had to deliver something to him. I can't remember what it was, but I had that day gotten out of the hospital. I had appendicitis and it was some form that had to be signed. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was not dressed like I am, like he's always seen me. I went to his house, knocked on the door. He didn't open it. He said, who is that? And I said, it's me. And he opened the door and said, oh, I didn't recognize the casual, Larry. <laughs> but <laughs> um, let's move off that. Let's let's start talking yeah, about let's, luxury. Let's, let's talk about something else. Luxury let's let's talk about uh, your listing. Okay. Um, wow, what a fantastic poem. Um, just so warm and inviting. Can I uh, just say something that uh, uh, I found out what the issue is sharing my screen with mm-hmm. this. I need another o- OBS is how they gets from Zoom through all the stuff. I need another OBS so it reads the screen. Mm-hmm. So right now the uh, it's not reading it. So I, I can't actually show your stuff on the show. Uh, yeah. Well, you, you we can see it, but no one else can see it. Exactly. That's the issue. But I, I'm getting that fixed next week. Okay. okay. Well, well, let's talk about it. Well, we can see the pictures and talk about it anyway. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll provide a link. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, let, let's, let's do the best we can. Okay. Well, I actually have it on my other screen, so um, I, I can see it very loud and clear. That's good. Um, well, we can't see it, so you're just going to have to talk about it. How many square feet? Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So, uh, yes, it is an absolutely magnificent home with uh, six bedrooms, six full baths, and three half baths. Um, it is close to 12,500 square feet, um, in, including all finished levels, uh, four-car garage, a beautiful motor court, um, in a very prestigious and gated community in Alpharetta, which Alpharetta is one of the best uh, areas in Atlanta to live. It's it right is, outside, it's, isn't it? Right, right outside. North, yeah, right north of uh, the perimeter, very close to everything, close to Buckhead, close to downtown, uh, just a short drive to the airport, about 45 minutes. Um, absolutely phenomenal area. And what's special about this particular home is that it is one of the only few homes in that neighborhood that actually backs up to Chattahoochee River. And it has a two and a half acre lot, which is so hey. incredibly big. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, lots of privacy, beautiful mature landscaping. Um swimming pool which is heated and it's salt water it's got a spa um j just three levels of absolute awesomeness that's a lot of square footage Twelve thousand square feet is a big big house All, almost 12 and a half yep <clears throat> so who who um who is the target for that obviously somebody who has the money to buy it what is the price point um it's listed at Four and a quarter million. Four and a quarter million. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking about uh, a a sports star or uh, there's a, a Coca-Cola executive, somebody who has that kind a of- senior executive, a sports celebrity, a movie celebrity, a anybody who um, has that kind of money. Yeah. And where did you spend it, of course? Um, and anybody who requires that elevated lifestyle. Right, right. Um, and on the first, in the first floor, there we go. <laughs> hold, hold, it, hold it, hold it steady, Jim. Hold it. Yeah, there you go. Now we can see it. This is trying to, trying yeah. to it's, it's make, make it fill the screen. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it, it's not showing up very well. Jim. No, it isn't. Um, I think we will be better to add the links. Yes, the kitchen was yeah. recently remodeled um, j just last year. Uh, there's still um, a few things that are going on. The swimming pool was renovated this year in the summer. Um, it's got updated lighting. It's got really amazing woodwork. Um, incredible incredible decor yeah that that's not even um uh, uh, it's not even showing the whole frame there no, no unfortunately yeah so uh that wasn't helpful so, um we'll have this fixed by next week um i'm sorry and we'll put a link to that youtube video on on the show so okay. people can get a chance to see it um how do people get in touch with you elena um any way possible i respond to phone calls unless i am in a meeting what i'm actually. asking is what's your phone number what's your email address <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that's is, the opportunity yeah, my phone number is 678-467-1687 uh, my email is elena sells s-e-l-l-s at gmail.com um I respond to phone calls, text, and emails very quickly. So That's, it's real simple. And, and if you're looking for a broker in Georgia that sells houses in pajamas, sells none, houses none, in your none, none better. <laughs> too, bad, too bad Hugh Hefner's gone. He was a pajama guy. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> Not even close, but okay. Um, he liked it hot. <laughs> From what I so, understand. so let's go back to uh, the process. Uh, you were at Keller Williams prior to coming to EXP. So mm -hmm. a year ago, you were at Keller Williams. I was. And um, did uh, did you just hear about EXP and 
that oh, was no. enough? Somebody spoke to you or what was? Yes, so one of our EXP icon agents, he's actually a triple icon and his name is Jamie Parker, um, is a very long-term friend. We've known each other for over 30 years. Wow. Um, Jamie's parents uh, were volunteers that helped my family when I first came to the U.S. So I've known Jamie since he was a 10-year-old boy. Was was he ever at Keller Williams? He was uh, for a minute. And it, w it, it was kind of funny. He got into the business late, uh, later than me. Um, and we kind of just like followed each other uh, everywhere. And he talked to me about EXP for five years and I declined to even look at it. I'm so sad. Well, that seems to be what happens to everyone. It certainly happened to me. And I think Jim wasn't quite that long, but- uh, 10 years. It, yeah, yeah, it's it's too good. Well, they had 300 agents when uh, I was introduced to it by Glenn uh, Sam. Right. Wow. It it almost feels but, too but, good to be true uh, until you dig down and you find it's absolutely true. Yeah, when it, he it, finally it, when he finally made me look at it, he's like, yeah. Lenny, you owe it to yourself. So so you what it. what was it that after five years, I mean, you, you think if you had looked at it five years earlier, that would have been enough or it would have taken five years? Because obviously I looked at it. And uh, it took a, it took a while for me to fit it into my business model. Mm -hmm. And even after I kind of decided, it still took a while for me to figure out what I would do. You know, every, everyone has their own process, so I'm 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 interested. So I I was never really too much um, of being in the office type of person. I like working from home. I have good discipline about working from home and, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it actually makes my business better. When the pandemic started, it was surprising to me, but my production actually doubled. And I realized it was because there was nowhere to go and the office was closed and I wasn't talking to people about anything except things that are important. And the light bulb went off and I was like, oh, wow, I can actually do more business by staying focused and staying put right here in this environment. And so when Jamie started talking to me again about EXP and um, he actually showed me all the things that we can do virtually, all the training that we can do virtually, all the meetings that we can do virtually, I was like, that just makes sense. Yeah. It yeah. totally made sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my my desk, where you see where Jim is sitting, my desk was on the other side of that wall and we talked every day. Uh, this is when we see each other unless we're socializing. So well, uh, you, you're invited in. I mean, I'm not, it's not like oh, I'm yeah, keeping yeah. you out of the office. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. But I, I learned like you, Elena, that that uh, I am really productive here mm -hmm. and and. Yeah, it, it actually is kind of shocking. I, sp I was speaking to a broker last evening in California, and uh, she's um, looking for her start in the business. And she said she w had talked to a, a couple of uh, companies, and they said, oh, she has to be in the office a certain number of hours or days a week. I was like, really? Are people, I mean, running my own company, Prior to EXP, I gave up on that, you know, required floor time, mandatory floor time, mandatory meaning. What does mandatory mean when you're really dealing with adults anyway? Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're going to force them. If Okay. So what, what's the alternative? What, what's the option? What's the outcome? They don't come to the meeting. They don't do floor time. You're going to fire them. Wow. Then you have. I don't know how many agents are you going to be talking to at the end of the day. Honestly, uh, it surprises me that uh, offices, some offices, still enforce that. We're all independent contractors. How right. we run our business is our business. Right. I mean, I have a physical office. You, what to do? 
<laughs> but, you know, people ask me, what's your goal? How many agents do you want? And I always said, I don't know, somewhere between a million and all the agents in the world. Oh, you, you, where are you going to put them all? Where are the desks going to be? Go, they're not, they're not coming to the office now. I don't have to build the biggest office in the world. Right. We do have an EXP office in uh, Arizona that's like 22,000 square feet. Wow. You know, wow. but but there's a good portion of it that's for a kitchen where he brings a chef in. I think it's a great idea. Then you don't have to rent out space for meetings and stuff. And But 22000 might be a little more than you really need. Increases your cost, though. Cost of but I like business. the idea of that house. Uh, of course, we can't see it uh, yet, but that would be a good good spot for an office oh fantastic people would come every day they wouldn't yeah. leave yep yeah. yep well you got swimming pools they'll bring their kayaks for the river mm -hmm. you could it's a Any, little rocky in that area but yeah you could anytime you feed agents they like that but uh, let, let's get back to the uh, the real value being around other people is of value to you having conver random conversations about something hey i i had this situation that happened can you help me mm -hmm. um you can still get that at exp in fact even more because yeah. you go into workplace the meta world and and there are people from all over the world that are willing to talk to you about whatever issue you have and it's not it's not, although it runs on the Facebook platform, it's private to EXP, but it's not Facebook and Twitter people. It's people who have real questions, people who are interested in getting something done. And that is, I, I talk a lot to people through that. In fact, I think that's how we, you and I first spoke. Yes, absolutely. And I, I actually really like that. Um, in addition to that, and I am a people person, so don't take me wrong. Um, in addition to that, I do network with a lot of people. Right. So, and this is actually how my business is growing. Um, it's through my networking contacts and referrals that they send right. me. So uh, there's a you know different types of networking, but also a lot of that is is going virtual now. Yeah. We yeah. do a lot of my BNI chapter is completely virtual. We do uh, Zoom meetings only. Well, that's right. a good point. I think um, I think the trend was probably towards us anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't really recall. I mean, we used to do uh, Larry and I. We used to do a podcast, and it was just audio, and we would do it in the office. We had our headphones, and we had our mics with the pop screens and uh you know and and then when the pandemic started i remember we did our audio podcast with a real estate broker in italy where it, it, they were hit really hard in the beginning so we were like asking them, how do you how do you do business but you know d during a pandemic but also um you know what's it what's it like in italy in the pandemic and, and I remember we were standing, I, I was social distancing from Larry. He was kind of social distancing from me. We had our board operator. He was sitting in a, in a distance. And within a week or two, we were on Zoom. And of course, at that point, we couldn't go to the barbers. So I was wearing a baseball cap for about six months. Shout out to you, Marco. I hope things are going well for you right now. Um... We've had people from all over the world on our show, and we look to that because uh, this is a global business, and uh, we want to highlight uh, EXP agents and the success that they're having because uh, now that we finally got smart enough to actually look into it, we realize that it's not one source of income, it's three or four or five sources of income. It's your own income that you produce. It's the stock that you own. It's the people that you bring into the organization. And those people pay you nothing. The company pays you because the punk, the company has decided from all of their separate businesses that they are going to turn 50% back to the agents because they are the first agency that doesn't say you're important, that shows you that the agent is the most important. 
it's a, that's a great point. Yeah. Um, it, this time goes by so quickly. Uh, do you have any other questions, Jim? There's something you want to ask? No, I, I, I just, I just think that, um, you know, the, the reason why the three of us found this company is because it was a combination of the way the business was changing anyway. The pandemic pulled it forward maybe five, ten years. Zoom certainly is used much more now than it had been prior to the pandemic. But I don't think people are really rushing back to the office. Uh, my wife's a software engineer. She um, she had uh, three three floors. Of, uh, of, a, of a tall building, like probably a 50 story building in Boston, um, they don't um, they don't go back to the office anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I have a so son. It's who not works just real estate, but why, why do we need an office? We meet clients at the property. Mm -hmm. We meet clients um, basically at the property. I mean, where else do you have to meet them? At their house. If you're if you're doing yeah. a listing, well, you go to the yeah, that's a problem. If, house, if we're doing the listing, oh yeah, you're right. If their apartment, if we're doing a buyer's consultation, yeah, it's you know. And when I started in the mortgage business in 1995, that was my selling point. I came to my clients' yeah. apartments after hours. Yeah, yeah. There was a whole uh, period in real estate where they thought you need to be in control. So you bring them into your office and show them what a great office and all that kind of crap. It's uh, I wanted to be in their house because if I'm going to sell that house, I want to be there. I want them to talk about their home when I'm there and I can see it. It That's doesn't. It and never there are companies me. that put a lot of money into having great offices. My fear for them is that the agents are going to actually pick up a calculator at some point and realize that they're leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars in somebody else's pocket sometimes every year. And they, yeah. you know, I've had brokers that tell me, you know, 40,000, 50,000 doesn't really make a difference to me. Well, I don't yes, know. It, it adds up after a while. Yeah. A $50, little here, a little dollars? there. If you think fifty thousand dollars isn't a lot of money, you're uh I don't know. Uh even for you. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna yeah, say. Well, well uh, even, it, it, even it people might not mean wealthy. anything to you annually, but if you're gonna be in the business for another ten years and you, then you, you got serious yeah. money. Yeah. Just imagine what you can do with that over a exactly. period of time. How and you can help your community, how you can give back, how you can train people. Uh, how you can take vacations and have a life. Um, yeah. That's what we all want. And how many and, empty desks does a, does a real estate company really need? You know, that's, that's the question. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a joy. Thank you so much, Elena, for joining us today. Um, and uh, join us next week uh, for Thank another you, episode. Thank of you, the Elena. Exponential Thank Files. You. Thank you, Elena. I have a great day. You guys. Bye -bye. Thanks, Jim. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Larry. See you guys soon. Thank you.